Hello, and uh, welcome back to day two of uh, All Things AI, uh, BrainChip CES Live podcast. And uh, we continue on with uh, our journey through CES with uh, a very close partner in Edge Impulse. And we have Spencer Wong, who's uh, the Chief Revenue Officer. Welcome, Spencer. Thank, thank you, Nandan, for having me. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it's great to see you guys here going from success to success. We've been partners for a while. In fact, um, BrainChip's been the first IP partner that Edge Impulse signed, and we can see the market at the edge truly changing. But I'll actually let you tell sure. us a little bit about what you've seen at CES and how do you see that evolving uh, um, over the last year and looking forward. Yeah, this CES has been extremely exciting. Um, the general vibe and is just optimism. Of course, AI, um, thanks to some of the LLMs and the Gen AI of last year, has just sunk in that companies need to have an AI strategy. And so, what I'm seeing, um, I think there's two different sets of customers or prospects. Of course, there are the early adopters that adopted, you know, what what we all believe the vision. They adopted this, you know, a few years ago, and so they're kind of off and running. Now, what I'm starting to see are people are, you all use the words of dipping their toe and they're exploring and very open to conversations. And it's more like, hey, Edge Impulse, hey, you know, uh, I'm sure you're seeing it at BrainChip. What are you seeing? Give us some advice, some guidance, because they know they have a mandate from, you know, someone higher up. They're now exploring this. And we, I've had so many great conversations around this. It's, it's super exciting. I mean, I think it reflects what we're seeing as well. And if if you went back into more and more uh, philosophy, this is kind of seems like we may have passed the valley of death. Right? <laughs> we're we're beginning to cross the chasm into yes. where um, AI could be more mainstream, right? But at the same time, I feel there's so much work to be done in scratching the surface, and the potential is immense. Would that be a fair characterization? Yes, I think. Uh, well, I know everyone knows about the potential, right? Uh, and they know about the impact. The the challenge or the uh, the opportunity, let's say, is people don't know how, uh, don't know how they need a Sherpa or an advisor to guide them. Uh, and what I really love about CES is, in general, people are open, open to conversations and just enthusiastic just about how to try these things. And so... We, I agree with you. I think we've we've crossed that chasm of death. People are now being open to it. They understand that this is something they need to go, they need to do. Yeah, and I think Edge Impulse especially is critical, I feel, as a platform, a development vehicle for people who may not know the deep innards of AI, but know what application they want to use, right? Would that be a fair statement? Well, that's a... That's a trick statement because I think <laughs> with the application they want to use, I think um, when we're having conversations, everyone knows what the promised land looks like and mm -hmm. they'll come up with, you know, we've had uh, uh, conversations with enterprises where they're you know, giving us this beautiful picture of what they want. And to me, I'm like, yes, there's AI involved in there, but it, it's extremely complex and you can't go from level zero to level five. There is a progression. I mean, of course, we all heard crawl, walk, run. Mm -hmm. Their higher ups are saying you need to run, you need to run. But if the organization's not even ready at the crawl stage, and that's why I use the word dipping your toe. Mm -hmm. um, you can't get to that run or the promised land. So I think people know where they want to go, the the end state. It's going back to what I said earlier. It's the how do I get to that end state? Exactly, and, and I think part of this is, uh, and this is where we saw, and why I feel we're crossing the chasm mm -hmm. is. The initial um, enthusiasts, et cetera, who are deep uh, domain experts or uh, kind of specialists know how to do that. Models, Correct. application layers, yes. et cetera. There's now a reasonable set of models that are out there that are optimized for various platforms available. And now it comes to, okay, I know what the application looks like. How do I choose the model? How do I tune it? Correct. I can use tools. Are they maturing enough to get us there? Yes. And that way you're taking some of the extreme deep uh, domain expertise necessary out while you can take some of those things and make them simpler for developers. I was going to say, Nandan, you have a job here at Edge Impulse because that's, <laughs> that's, that's our value proposition. We want to make it easy. We want to make it simpler. 
I think which, what I do appreciate, AI is now becoming a common word and, and people accept, okay, AI is, AI is not a scary word, but remember like machine learning, right? That's what we used to, you know, it's a form of AI. And, you know, when, when I didn't know anything about machine learning, I'm like, oh my gosh, do I have to be a rocket scientist to do machine learning? Like that's such a scary phrase. And what our software does is we take that complexity away. We make it really easy to get started to do machine learning or, or, or the fancier word, edge AI, mm -hmm. onto partner um, silicon using, you know, like brain chip IP, for example, right? They, yep. can, they, can, they can do this and they can experiment and actually start to see some of the results. Yeah, exactly. And it's a, continuing on our uh, crossing the chasm uh, metaphor or uh, analogy, right? So this is kind of coming to the early majority yes. uh, phase. I mean, still, we're scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. But what are the um, segments that are truly taking that post-dipping toe? They're actually now beginning to wade in. Yeah, I'm going to give you some real world, like real time conversations where, um, you know, at Edge Impulse, we, uh, we focused mainly in two areas, uh, digital health. And so I just came from a meeting with a major um, I should say medical device, I'll keep it very broad, medical device company, and their products are already out today and they do it a certain way. And it's probably, you know, 1990s technology, nothing rules-based, nothing great. But what I, what I loved about the conversation and it goes to what I said earlier, right? They know they need to use AI. They need, they don't know how, and they know that, okay, well, we got to get started today because it does take two to three years before these new products go. Uh, go to market, especially with compliance regulation on the medical device side. So that's one area that we really are seeing. Um, it, it makes a lot of sense to start talking now. And then um, what's re really been hot is computer vision. Mm -hmm. And of course, we all know about object detection, facial recognition, but applying that to real use cases to help companies uh, become more operationally efficient um, rather through, you know, maintenance, but safety has been a big one too. Mm -hmm. You know, are the workers, do they have their proper PPE on? Yep. You know, and so we are seeing, um, companies come in maybe with that end state application. How do they do that? You know, they want to do that. And their, their engineers are looking for tools and partners to get, to get to there. And uh, you, we talk about automotive, yep. we talk about industrial, we talk about, you've already talked about healthcare. Yeah. So there are areas where um, at least we believe that that bridge has been almost crossed in that they, there is no turning back. You need it. Yep. Right. And how the question is, how do you do it in a way that is not prohibitively expensive? Yeah. You just brought the, the magic word because we're here at Consumer Electronics Show and you know, Consumer Electronics, bomb, right? Mm -hmm. It's so important for them. And yep. so how can they do it in a cost-effective way? And this is actually where both our interests lie, is that when we think about bomb, we're talking about device, but we're also talking about this the overall service that finally is what people get. Right. Right. And for that, the move of AI from over computing, over transmitting to the cloud yes. and a dumber device is no longer viable. You have to move closer to the edge. Correct. And for that, I think both of us are looking at technologies that are efficient, lowering bomb cost, and easy to deploy, faster to deploy. That's the only way this can scale and correct. really give the promise of what, I mean, we call AIoT, right? That, that's correct. And, and um, you know, for many folks out there that, um, I, mean, I know it's hard for some people to change mentality, and I use that word bomb because people focus on the bomb, but it's much more than just bomb, right? And you just mentioned that. You know, if people want to make smart devices and they're saying, oh, these smart devices need to be always connected to the cloud. Oh, you know what? There's a big cloud cost. And I love the cloud. I, I, I has a lot of, you know, it's delivered a lot of promises, but the big thing the cloud did was it opened up the floodgates and now, um, you know, any, anyone can leverage the cloud, but there's a cost behind that. You know, it, it costs money to, to process. And so it makes sense to do some of that on the edge and of course, privacy and things like that. And there's a cost, a saving cost savings associated with that, that yeah. I would, you know, that's part of our, our conversation when we talk to yeah. uh, our customers, you need to take that into consideration. Exactly. We, we, instead of focusing on the device, <laughs> yes. think about the overall solution, the overall Correct. service that you're going. And in fact, part of what 
we've been talking about with our new technology like TENS is how do you reduce training cost yeah. while giving the benefits of uh, what, let's say, recurrent neural nets do, et cetera. How do you reduce the overall cost? Because actually the cloud cost, the training cost are actually a much larger part of the bomb <laughs> in terms of an overall thing than the device cost itself. Yeah, it's it, it's going to take some time because I'm, I'm thinking of certain customers in particular where their teams or their product managers are being measured just on that one point bomb. And that needs to change. Yeah. No, I think this is, uh, uh, for all those listening, <laughs> this is a part of the discussion of looking at the holistic yes. solution on what the cost reductions are rather than uh, on a particularly uh, small um end device, because the whole point of making it cost effective is to make the device cost effective. Correct. But also realize that the overall service, the overall solution that you're getting is reducing cost by taking more off the cloud, taking more Correct. off of the uh, communications by doing it that plus adding privacy, adding security. Yes. Which is the, the ultimate, right? It's, a, it's user satisfaction, delighting the customer. They're getting the insights. They're getting what they need immediately. And you know they fall in love with the actual product. Cool. Well, um, I know you have uh, time constraints, but I really appreciate you Thank coming. You. Before you go, I mean, you come out and seen uh, what we're doing, Brainchip is doing at the show. What do you think? Oh my gosh. I wish I wish the audience could come here and see the demos. They're amazing. Some of the, um, it's not futuristic. It is here today. I, I'm coming into a, a, one of the demos and it's recognizing my facial expressions and it knows if I'm happy or sad. And this stuff may seem a little scary, but this is things like I'm already thinking, you know, for people with disabilities or how do we help mankind? And I really applaud Brainship for your technology mm -hmm. and being able to, you know, your intellectual property. And I see every silicon vendor, every device will have your technology or, you know, neomorphic type technology in it, AI accelerated. This is going to be the norm. Well, um, we hope this continues. Either way, it's going to happen. It will. Yes. And uh, ecosystem partners like ourselves, and of course, we're part of a, a big sea of providers that can work together to deliver it. So, well, thank you so much for thank your you. time, Spencer, and uh, all the best with CES and the rest of 24. All right. Thank you so much for having me.